Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and this demo is about something we call Cloud Wrapper, which is uh, some amazing functionality for RackN um, that actually lets us spin up and control machines in cloud environments. Uh, using We use Terraform, we use Ansible, we use some advanced features called Contexts, Digital Rebar, but the short story here is that I'm going to create a machine, Digital Rebar, really a machine object, and then I'm going to use Terraform to spin up an instance of that machine in multiple cloud, and then I'm going to tear it down and, and decommission it using uh, standard libraries, uh, standard workflow uh, in the cloud wrapper content pack. And this can be a little confusing because Digital Rebar and RackN are really about physical infrastructure automation. The reality is we are about self-managed infrastructure, not just physical layer. We really have to be able to play anywhere in the stack. That's exactly what we've been doing for a while. Cloud Wrapper standardizes these practices that we've been doing for a while into a, a consistent, repeatable way that you can easily extend and expand or just take advantage of the, the, the basic templates that we've already built. So without further ado, let me dive in, show you exactly how this is going to look. Uh, this is Digital Rebar in the background. And I'm just going to create a machine we're going to demo on Linode in this case. And uh, I'm going to start it in the runner context. Uh, the runner context is just a digital rebar agent running on a container on the digital rebar provision server. And uh, I'm just going to start it in a very simple discover base workflow. Uh, and for this to work right, uh, I do have a profile that I'm adding that already has my Linode credentials. I'll show you exactly what that looks like. I'm just doing it here because it's convenient. And then um, I'm also going to put it in this, I think it's already in cluster. No, I'm going to add it to this cluster that I have as a tag just to make it easier to find. And so from that perspective, uh, we now have a machine that's running and available. It, it is actually, it's not a machine. There's no physical or virtual instance of this machine anywhere. It's just an object backed by a context, which is an, a simple Docker container running an agent. But I can do simple workloads. So we have like a load test that just runs uh, a workflow that I can use from as a developer to test workflow starting and stopping. And you can see it's running just fine. It wouldn't do this if there wasn't some type of backing instance in this case, what we call uh, a runner context. Very exciting. And then uh, for, and then in the background here, I've also logged into Linode, I've logged into Google, I've logged into Amazon. And let me quickly create the other machine. So I'm gonna create one for AWS. We're going to start it in the runner context. We are going to do the same discover base workflow, and we're going to put it in AWS and cluster vehicle. Excellent. So now we have an AWS instance, and we're going to add one for Google too. Technically GCE. And same thing, runner context, discover base, just to give me a starting point. Sorry, not bootstrap, discover base. Uh, in this case, Google and cluster vehicle, we're good. And we're going to add these machines and go. And so now we've got three machines all running um, some degree of um, just a basic system. Now what's happened is I've, I've assigned different profiles in here. And if I click into my Linode profile, what you'll see is we've determined that the cloud provider here is Linode. And then my credentials to log into Linode, which are stored in a secure, sense, uh, secure encrypted way in the system are included here. And if I went back to my other profiles, you would see I've done the same thing for GCE. Uh, GCE has more default requirements, so I have to have my credential, my cloud provider, but I also need a project ID and a login, RSA uh, login key to be able to access that machine after I start it. Amazon, similarly, you need an access key, a secret key, provider, always required, and a uh, RSA uh, login key instead of root, That's, which is the... So now I can move over to the machines that I created with the profiles correctly set, Amazon, Google, and Linode. And if I choose those three machines and choose the standard cloud provision workflow, it will now go through this standard process using each provider information correctly to create machines in each cloud. So what it's literally doing here is uh, in the cloud provision workflow, it's going to uh, call the cloud provision <laughs> stages. The stages uh, 
validate that you have the right keys, create an RSA key for that machine to log in. It's stored on the machine itself. And then run uh, the Terraform contact. So it starts Terraform in a container, applies the plan, and I'll show you exactly how that plan works, then switches to Ansible to do our join up standard process, which logs in using SSH and starts Digital Rebar Agent and joins it to the machine. At that point, it's going to hand off to the system and do a normal discovery, firewall configuration, cloud inspection, talking to the meta APIs and things like that. So super powerful from that perspective. You can see it's already gone through the process. Uh, if I jumped into Terraform Apply here, you can literally see that we're just running a Terraform instance create and the process is going through the back end. It just finished this. Uh, so if I come back to here, you'll see it switched to the join up where it's waiting for the machine to come online. Uh, the Amazon one won the race this time. They don't always. Uh, let's see. So in this case, I've got, you can see a previous test run. Here's the machine I just created. It's initializing it. Um, it was already available. The SSH key came in. I have a public IP address. If I jump back to the machine, you'll see we capture that IP address as the machine's IP address. Uh, I'm going to get very clear feedback with uh, Google not working, and we'll We'll look at how that, that goes and troubleshoot exactly what happened. Uh, Linode one also finished and created. So here is my Linode server. I called it Linode. It becomes Linode. Um, and it gets put into the uh, cluster named uh, cluster vehicle because of the tags that I identified. And if I come over to uh, Amazon, uh, Google, we did actually create the machine here. There's an SSH uh, problem. And we'll find out exactly what that is in just a minute. Um, so those, those machines do exist. They are completely usable. If I wanted to start provisioning things against them, I can just click some buttons. They're now digital rebar machines. So for example, if I wanted to provision uh, K3S, which I have loaded here, I could just come in. Uh, let me make sure I clear K3S. I don't want to use an existing cluster profile, so I just remove that. I'm going to go in. I'm going to run our K3S install. And it'll just go through and do K3S install on that server. Um, it takes about 30 seconds to get that done. So let's look at what happened um, with uh, this one uh, Google machine before we dive in more deeply. Uh, in this case, uh, we can see we actually were able to SSH into it. This is literally just Ansible being run on the Digital Rebar server. Uh, as a plan, and we just create the plan template and feed the right information into it, and it just runs the plan. I, I, there's no client, there's no desktop, it's running from Digital Rebar in a container. Um, and I can run hundreds of these in parallel. Uh, it's very lightweight and simple, and the containers are predefined with the agent in it, so it just works. It's very nice. So in this case, you can see what happened is we failed to do our join up script for some reason. Uh, their URL was not opened yet, it looks like. It couldn't, it couldn't talk back to the server. And so to fix that, I can literally just rerun this task. This is one of those timing issues or uh, something hadn't settled correctly yet. And if I rerun it, I can go and watch it run the Ansible process uh, live as that agent is running. Once again, this is running in a context on the Digital Rebar server. We're about to transfer control to the server endpoint so that it can actually do that, that work. And in this case, it completed all that work and just it worked just fine. Um, and so you'll see it's running through the network firewall setups, um, which has to download um, the firewall controls um, and go through the install pieces, things like that. This is a normalization step. Not all the uh, machines need it, but some of them do. So we, we do run this step. Um, and it's completely configurable from that perspective. Uh, and you can also see I finished my K3S install, which is great. And now I have machines under Digital Rebar control in three completely disparate clouds. And if I want to add more machines, I can just clone them and everything looks great. Let me dig into what happened behind the scenes a little bit so that you can get a sense of that.
So to do that, I'm going to start this whole process from scratch. Um, and we'll show you what it looks like if I create a, a new machine. So here's my, new, my from scratch machine, runner context. Uh, discover base. Actually, in this case, we can actually we can skip uh, the discover base and go directly to cloud provision, which means I could do a command line install that would do all this work right from the start. Super handy, um, and not even and not skip over. I can also attach it to pooling and provision machines when they get allocated from pools and deallocated. That's a pooling demo, and I do show it in the pooling demos. So uh, look for that. The Linode cluster vehicle again, so I can easily find the machine. Uh, and that's it. So once I say add here, this is, machine is going to automatically start the, con the context and run, and it's moving into Terraform Apply. Terraform Apply is where a lot of this magic is happening. Um, and the beauty here is this is just Terraform being run by Digital Rebar. And then we take the output. We control the input. We take the output. And that lets us take advantage of Terraform's API controls, um, which they have an impressive library of API controls. But we can manage the state. We track the Terraform state. Um, we control the running. And anything that gets exited from Terraform, we also track and then pass downstream. So if you want to build automation that passes things into Terraform, I'll show you how we did that. If you want to take automation that pulls things out of values that you pulled out of Terraform and then sends it downstream for further automation steps, I'll show you how we did that. And then since we store the state, later on, we can destroy use Terraform destroy even though they're disconnected actions. We don't have to preserve a file on a, on a server somewhere. Terra, uh, Digital Rebar is actually pulling in the state and I'll show you exactly where that happens. One of the fun things is I get to see exactly what's going on. It's all live logging. Um, so it started with Terraform. It jumped into Ansible. You notice it pulled back the IP address and, and did the work. And here's the scratch machine I built with Linode. So how did we do this magic? The way we did it is in the cloud provision workflow, that's where most of the magic happens, we have a Terraform apply process. This is actually not in CloudRap. This is standard task library work. So we support this task generally. And you can use, use it to apply Terraform work in many different ways. Um, CloudRap uses it and uses it in, in some consistent patterns. Um, and what you'll see is fundamentally we inject a whole bunch of variables about digital rebar that you might want to use in, in your Terraform scripts. And then we run, this is basically running Terraform apply. So this isn't really where the magic is happening. Um, this is uh, a standard way that we run Terraform in a context for digital rebar operators. The thing that gets interesting here is when I look at this scratch machine, and I scroll down into the parameters, you'll notice that we've collected the cloud instance, the cloud IP address. These are standards across all of the cloud wrapper. We've done our normal inventory. I have my keys, so the public key and private key that were injected in that machine. Now, if you've defined keys in Digital Rebar using the um, access keys, access keys uh, group, or access keys global, um, those will also get included in discovery and added onto the machine. So you don't have to rely on these keys. You can easily have Digital Rebar adding your own keys. Super handy. Um, and then what we're doing is we're collecting, these are variables that were ejected by our template, instance ID and machine IP. So they're actually Terraform variables, outputs. Um, and then we have a definition that says Terraform plan automation. This is what tells that task to run in Terraform. Uh, and it's a list of plans. I'll show you this one in just a minute called Cloud Provision Reference. And that reference contains the instructions for Linode, uh, Google, Amazon. We'll continue to add it as we get. And then this is the Terraform state file. So in this case, you can see I've actually added the authorized keys. The whole state is captured here. And anytime that plan is run, it's going to continually uh, update and review. So it'll pull down that state file, apply Terraform, save the state file. And this state file gets updated as we go for this machine. If I need to clean out that state file, I can just delete the parameter and everything's good. So that leaves us to look for this template. So the cloud provision reference template here is what is, if you're used to Terraform, it's very straightforward. It is literally the different cloud providers. So this, from this section, 
where I'm looking for the Linode provider, this is a Terraform template to create machines in Linode. And we've already done a lot of the hard work for you. Now, Linode template's pretty straightforward. It's, it doesn't take a lot of work to define a machine here, define their password. Notice these are uh, parameters. They have safe defaults, so you can just use the safe defaults and get running. If you want to override them, you just override them in the profile that you're assigning, or in global, or on the machine itself, and then you will be able to pass in the right information. So while this template has some safe defaults and it builds machines, uh, it's designed to be extensible in, in normal ways. And if you want, you could just replace your own Terraform uh, automation plan, plan automation parameter, and add your own. So if you have your own plan or you have a much more sophisticated thing, you can use the exact same workflow, create your own template, and then make it go. Um, and if you have something that's standard and you want to make available to other people, please give us a pull request and help improve this standard template so that it works in more cases and on more clouds. Uh, in this case, the, ant, the one to do AWS is more complex, right? You have to specify regions and multiple keys. You have to define your public keys separate from the machine definition, which is fine. So we have a stanza for that. You need to set up security groups so that you can access the machine. And then you actually need to create the parameters for how the system goes. And then we have some standard schemas where we are able to take outputs. If it's called machine IP, we recognize that as IP. If we define other values, we save those values. Uh, you'll notice the one that we have for Linode defines instance ID also because we want instance ID. There, we can't get that from a metadata API like we do Amazon or Google. So no problem, we just, we just pull it out of the Terraform uh, plan. Very straightforward from that perspective. And then here's the Google one. Google um, sort of in between has some complexity where we have to define our credentials as a file um, and then create a compute instance and go. Once again, this is not uh, particularly complex things from that perspective. It is really just defining um, you know, a, a Terraform plan that we feed in. Everything else is completely standard in these processes. Ansible join is standard on all of them. The post provisioning pieces are completely standard. The only thing that is really being changed by each cloud provision is which part of this Terraform plan we are invoking. Um, and that's why it, it ends up being this very simple standard process where I can just create machines and destroy them. And then when I want to destroy them, I'm, I'm running the same process sort of backwards. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and just destroy all of the, what we're calling decommission here. So I'm going to cloud decommission. And when I cloud decommission, what it's doing here is it's running through the process using Terraform apply, passing in destroy instead of apply. Uh, and then that is performing the operations that Terraform has defined on the state file. So it's just pulling in the state file, doing the operations, and then it's going to uh, run through the, the system. So you can see here, it uh, looks like I have uh, an error in how it's, um, no, it's removing, this is normal. Uh, when Terraform state file is empty, it's removing it. And that's, um, sometimes we, we get the, the response is an error from digital rebar because something doesn't exist and we just eat that error if it's normal. So it looks like an error in the code, but it doesn't stop the workflows, which it shouldn't be doing. Um, and so in this case, if I come back, you'll see Linode, let me refresh here, Google, Amazon have all had those machines be destroyed, um, which is exactly what I was expecting from a decommission stage. And if I want, since the machines still exist in digital rebar, they just have no backing instance. Notice the address has been pulled also. I can just repeat the process. And so from that perspective, I've now created a way to hold potential machines that have standard workflows and processes in digital rebar, build up an infrastructure as code story about their post-provisioning history, and then destroy them, recreate them, destroy them, recreate them. This is amazingly power, e powerful. Even if you're not planning to do a lot with the cloud, if you're using digital rebar and building workflows, this allows you to click start and click stop a workflow, create the backing instance, 
completely fresh machine, run it through that process, and then tear it back down. And it just takes a couple of seconds to make this go. The fun thing here is now I'm actually able to test my workflows. I could test it against multiple operating systems very easily. I could test it against multiple cloud providers very easily. Um, this is truly able to come in and just run the infrastructure uh, the way that um, you know we think about how to do it in digital rebar uh, with all the standard infrastructure as code components um, and state. Uh, when we look at infrastructure as code, you know, the Terraform pieces of having a plan, and API shims is amazing, but without the state information uh, and the ability to then chain all this automation together, uh, you've really lost something. And that's the, the added dimension that I'm showing here for how these things go. Looks like AD, AWS is gonna, gonna be the winner uh, today every single time. That's interesting. Um, Results may vary depending on what clouds you're in and, and the day of the week, but uh, very exciting results. And actually, if I come back into the cloud provision, I've run this enough times, I should be able to uh, start seeing some history and performance data out of that cloud provisioning operation. So uh, you can actually see where the long pools are. This is Terraform apply, no surprise, um, and then the join up. But we're talking, you know, under a minute to get a machine, you know, 20, 15, 20 seconds to actually come in. Um, so overall, these these jobs are taking, it looks like 76 seconds, so a minute and a half to get a machine completely provisioned. Um, and then happily easy to destroy when you're done with that machine. You can just put it back into service and you are done. Hope this was helpful. Please check out uh, the library. It's called CloudWrap. It's in the catalog. Um, there's obviously a ton of parameters in this case, so if you're looking for how these things work, you can search for cloud in the parameters list, um, or if you're doing AWS work, all the AWS parameters. Um, super easy to find all the different bits and pieces. Uh, and this is growing and evolving, so we would love to get your feedback and input on how these things work. Um, just check us out with uh, Digital Rebar. Um, rebar.digital or just visit rackend.com it'll take you to the same place uh, and one other thing to note um, that is is worth uh, knowing on this uh, this does require contexts uh, which is a licensed feature um, you can use the trial license and get the context that you need to build this uh, it's super straightforward cloud wrap actually builds the context that you need so if you build a uh, system uh, and Turn on the use the uh, advanced. Turn on the self-run registering agent and Bootstrap Advanced will install Docker for you. Need a demo. Need a separate video to explain that one. Um, once that one's really fun, uh, makes it very easy to start a advanced digital rebar. So look for the bootstrapping video. Um, also, that'll help you uh, get the context pieces installed with no hassle at all. So, hope this was helpful. This is Rob Hirschfeld signing out.